हेलो फ्रेंड्स आई एम सुनील सर एंड आई एम बैक विद अ न्यू वीडियो दोस्तों आज के इस वीडियो में हम क्या सीखेंगे वन ऑफ द मोस्ट इंपॉर्टेंट टॉपिक ऑफ योर चैप्टर वन दैट इज रिप्रोडक्शन इन फ्लावरिंग प्लांट द टॉपिक विच मोस्ट ऑफ द स्टूडेंट्स फाइंड डिफिकल्ट इज समथिंग रिलेटेड टू डबल फर्टिलाइजेशन हाउ इट कैन बी रिटर्न इन एग्जाम एंड हाउ इट कैन बी इजली लर्न फॉर दैट आई एम मेकिंग दिस वीडियो आई हैव अ वेरी सिंपल वर्ड फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल दैट इज कॉल्ड एज फर्टिलाइजेशन सो वेन एवर वी टॉक अबाउट फर्टिलाइजेशन वॉट कम्स इन माइंड इट इज नथिंग बट फर्टिलाइजेशन इज यूनियन ऑफ हैप्लॉइड मेल गैमेट विथ हैप्लॉइड फीमेल गैमेट फॉर द फॉर्मेशन ऑफ जाइगोट दिस प्रोसेस इज कॉल्ड एज फर्टिलाइजेशन नाउ द पॉइंट इज वेन एवर वी टॉक अबाउट मेल गैमेट द मेल गैमेट इन केस ऑफ प्लांट इट इज पोलिन ग्रेन यू गेट फ्रॉम पोलिन ग्रेन and the female gamete you get from ovule so this male and female gamete when they unite together they form a zygote the male gamete will be haploid and female gamete haploid and the zygote form will be diploid that is 2l this zygote afterwards develops into embryo but in case of flowering plant in case of angiosperm the most important thing that you need to understand that the angiosperm shows double fertilization very important all the angiosperms they show double fertilization there was a question asked in neat exam what is the ploidy level of endosperm in gymnosperm the answer remains same since there is no double fertilization in gymnosperm the ploidy level of endosperm in case of gymnosperm will be always n but the moment we talk about angiosperm the ploidy level of the endosperm is 3n which is nothing but triploid the point is what are the different events that takes place at the time of double fertilization so for this i have already made the diagram of gynaecium where i have mentioned different different parts let us take this is stigma this part is style the lower part is ovary and inside the ovary what you get is the ovule and then i have taken out one part of the ovule and to study the process let's understand very first thing is what do you mean what exactly happens when there is pollen pistil interaction so this what you can see here is nothing but pollen grain the pollen grain is going to land on the stigma once the pollen grain lands on the stigma there is no such guarantee that the pollen grain and the gynaecium they will be of same species they can be even of different species so what is required here the stigma has receptors and these receptors they are going to match with the receptors of pollen grain let's take for example this gynaecium is of mango flower and the pollen grain which is landed is of chiku plant so there is no possibility that this stigma will provide any opportunity for this pollen grain to develop so in pollen pistil interaction the most important part is that the pollen grain should match the receptors for example if i draw something like this let's take this to be the receptor of stigma there is one pollen grain having this kind of receptor there is another pollen grain having this kind of receptor so receptor a and receptor b so but obvious the pollen grain that will match with the stigma is b so pollen grain once matches with the receptors it is called as pollen pistil interaction once the pollen grain has matched its receptors with the stigma now what the stigma becomes happy stigma provides lots of sugary fluid stigma provides lots of sugary fluid to the pollen grain and because of this sugary fluid what happens the pressure inside the pollen grain will increase now pollen grain is double layered having outer one as the axine which is hard tough and thick so the pressure will not create any kind of impact on the axine but the axine has some depressions those depressions are called as germ pore and inner layer is called as intine so when the pressure inside the pollen grain increases the vegetative cell which is also called as a tube cell 
will rupture one of the germ pore with the help of intine and the intine will stretch as the pollen tube. This will happen only when the pollen pistil interaction is completed. Stigma has provided sugary fluid and the pollen tube has came out. So whenever we talk about this labeling, this is nothing but the pollen tube and the cell which is giving rise to pollen tube is a vegetative cell. Even it is called as tube cell. The pollen tube now, the length of the pollen tube depends on what? Remember students, the length of the pollen tube will totally depend on the length of the style. It doesn't matter what is the length of the style, the pollen tube under chemical attraction starts moving towards the ovule. So this pollen tube keeps on growing and it depends on the length of the style. So if this length of the style is big, the pollen tube also will be big. If the length of the style is small, the pollen tube length also will be small. The pollen tube, once it passes, now it passes through the style. By that time, what happens? The generative cell undergoes second mitosis and it forms two haploid male gamete. Now, this two haploid male gamete will move ahead for double fertilization. So there is now the next important point coming into picture that is entry of pollen tube. See the pollen tube will enter through certain specific opening. The opening of the ovule is called as micropyle and if the pollen tube enters through the micropyle it is called as porogamy. The word poro means micropyle and the word gamy means marriage. So pollen tube enters through the micropyle. Now students there are three terminologies. First of all the fertilization is taking place by the help of pollen tube. So I can say call it as siphonogamy. So what is siphono? Siphono means pollen tube, gamy means marriage. Remember the pollen tube first thing it can enter through the micropyle. If the pollen tube enters through the micropyle it is called as porogamy. Most important word that can be asked in your NEET exam. So porogamy, the pollen tube enters through micropyle. But most of the time it has been observed that the pollen tube enters through the integuments also. Sometimes the pollen tube can enter through the integument. If it enters through integument, it is called as mesogamy. What is mesogamy? Entry of pollen tube through integuments and sometime it has been observed that the pollen tube will not enter from micropyle or the integuments. It enters directly from the chalaza and if the pollen tube enters through the chalaza, we call it as chalazogamy. Very important. Chalazogamy means the pollen tube enters through chalaza. Now looking at this part, we have understood three different terms. See inside this synergids, there is something very important called as filiform apparatus. Now this filiform apparatus is a finger like projection which attracts the pollen tube toward itself for fertilization. After getting attracted, the pollen tube will rupture one of the synergids. Now since it ruptures one of the synergids, what happened? Try to understand. The filiform apparatus attracts the pollen tube, provides some sugary fluid. Because of this, the pollen tube gets excess of fluid and it ruptures one of the synergids. So I can write it in this way that pollen tube ruptures one of the synergids. Now since the pollen tube has ruptured one of the synergids, all the liquid of the pollen tube will now rush into the embryo sac. This structure is embryo sac and remember embryo sac is 7 celled and 8 nucleated structure. So the male gamete that is released, first male gamete will go and it will fertilize the cell at the micropyle end. So this is nothing but first male gamete plus egg cell. So first male gamete fertilizes the egg cell. Male gamete is haploid. Egg cell is also haploid. 
that results in the formation of zygote and the zygote is diploid. This zygote will further develop into embryo. Now this process where the first male gamete fertilizes the egg cell is called as, this is called as first fertilization. This is called as first fertilization or even it is called as syngamy. So this is technically also called as syngamy. Now what happens to the second male gamete? The second male gamete goes to the secondary nucleus. So I put it in this way. There is a polar nuclei. This polar nuclei you can also call it as secondary nucleus. So the second male gamete fertilizes the polar nuclei or the secondary nuclei. So we can say second male gamete fertilizes polar nuclei or secondary nucleus. Now this results in the formation of endosperm. Remember one thing students that male gamete is n, secondary nucleus is 2n. So endosperm will be 3n. So n plus 2n and that is 3n. Now coming to the next part. This process where you have seen triple fusion. This is how the fertilization takes place. In angiosperm it takes place twice. Therefore we call it as double fertilization. Now the point is, what is the significance of double fertilization? See students, once double fertilization has taken place, then only there will be formation of seed, then only there will be formation of fruits and in double fertilization, most important, both male gametes are utilized. So we say both male gametes are utilized. So this is the significance of double fertilization. This is what you should know about double fertilization, most important topic from the chapter reproduction in flowering plant. See you in the next video. This is your Sunil sir saying goodbye. Thank you very much.